So uh, the Seleucids made their initial uh, advance basically all along the line, but down here we see the elephants and the calf advanced, and also on the other flank. Um, I'm beginning to see why I rated this game so highly. I have a standard rating system that I've kept up for a couple decades, and uh, eh, this one got an 8. And I couldn't understand why such a simple little game could. I, let me explain the combat a little bit better and in more detail than I did last night when I was very tired. Um, so, it's entirely up to the attacker to make an attack. Uh, you move up, you can only attack one stack versus one stack, and you're just rolling to see if you do damage. The defender uh, doesn't get any chance to hurt you in this. If you want to attack at, wor at one to two odds or worse, you have to make a morale check first, which means you might break trying to make that kind of last gasp attack. Um, as I already explained, we have the die roll modification based on type, which is very cool. Uh, it means that uh, units making um, attacks against types that they're really advantageous against have a decent chance of smashing those units even on the one to two table. And the one to two table isn't really the one to two table. If you manage to get an outflank, you still have to make a morale check to attack a larger enemy's flank, but if you do, your force is doubled or whatever. Um, and then we have the routing, which is the main effect of this. We saw a couple of units got killed. Okay, big deal. They're just gone, and I don't think those even count for victory points because they're not, they don't count as spears. Um, but when you, when a force gets either a C result on the combat table, or if it's in a stack that has to make a morale check, and only the top heavy unit makes a morale check in a heavy stack, but in any other kind of stack, everything makes its own separate little morale check because they're not really formed in the same way. You have to roll, and this is, my setup kind of doesn't represent this well, but mainly in the secondary layer, although some of the units. You have to roll higher than the morale factor, which is that middle number, and oh boy, is my finger shaking, um, in order to stand. And if you don't stand, you route. Routing, in general, you try to run through the less formed units, um, there doesn't seem to be an effect in terms of routing through and through your friendly units, however, so you can even route through your heavy infantry formation without disrupting it in any way. That's kind of a sad point, but what there is, is if the elephants route, and we had one, this is an elephant routing here, if the elephants route, they roll on this little table to determine which space they route into first. And they basically do that three times because their movement factor is three. Anyway, um, if they walk into spaces with any troops, those troops have to make morale checks. If light units route for any reason, and this is really the only time this rule takes effect, any elephants in the stack with them might route too. Because routing elephants can't trample other elephants, but... <laughs> They can scare the people away who are keeping the elephants uh, calm. All right, so we don't see a lot happening here. A little bit of casualties, a little bit of a little bit of uh, of hitting on the lines. I'm going to be using these big dice to indicate turn. Um, each player gets six turns for the whole game, and I'll be putting a red one down for the Ptolemics once they get their turn. And we'll see what happens. Okay, and here we look uh, after the Ptolemaic first turn. Uh, some serious engagements going on on the flanks where the elephants and calf are in place, but we're also seeing a little bit of infantry fighting. Now, the elephants on the Seleucid side, one of them started a route, and we're seeing a lot of Seleucid units breaking over on the left flank. So one of the neat things about the game is there's so much luck in it that 
Yeah, you know, you, you can't really make huge decisions as to, you know, whether or not something's going to work well. You can take some risks, but overall, the chance of your army just breaking, that's something you don't have much control over. If you're going to fight, you don't know whether or not, you know, your, your army's going to hold up. And the elephants add to that. Uh, add a multiplying factor to that risk because if they're in with any of your stuff they can just send everything running um, we had uh, somebody ran off the map we have a bunch of dead dead units uh, I was mistaken about the victory conditions slightly um, it's not the number of spears you kill it's the number of spears you have unrouted on the map at the end of the game which kind of makes more sense. It's, can, do you have enough to hold the field? Because routed and destroyed units really, there's no real easy way to tell how much of them were actually damaged and how many could be reformed, you know, for another battle or whatever. But holding the field is a clear indicator. So the Seleucids engaged fully um, all down the line and also managed to rally most of their forces, uh, so, uh, maybe half, I don't know. But uh, we're definitely seeing the Ptolemaic uh, numbers in terms of actually left the map one way or another uh, increasing greatly. This die here is to remind me, I rolled for the Egyptian morale. Now, when I first showed you the chart in the intro, I thought three was the worst number. In actuality, now that I understand the morale, and I think this happens every time I play, I think the morale, high morale is good, I set up for that, and then I play it. And it doesn't have much effect, but uh, they're actually very awesome, and you will not break them, <laughs> is pretty much the rule. Only on a two-on-two -two dice will they break, so there's a lot of them, and they're pretty good units, and they're going to... You know, I mean, they're not immune to being destroyed, so that's not that tough to do, actually. It's just whenever you hit those C results, and there's a decent number of them at any given level, um, and in kind of the middle, they're the very likely results. Whenever you hit those, they're just going to stand. You're not going to be able to affect them. Uh, Salusids are trying to be careful in terms of their choices of attacks. But it's tough because you can't attack the same unit twice. But if you knock that unit off the top of the stack, another unit, another stack can attack the unit that was below it. So there's some little tricky uh, elements to, to the combat system here. And I think they add up to providing a game that requires a lot of die rolling and a lot of... Uh, a lot of kind of fiddly nature, but I really like the the overall result of it, even even if it's wearing my poor wrist out. So the Ptolemaics uh, took their turn and didn't really move a lot. Uh, it was an elephant that went berserk and wandered around here, maybe scared up a couple of Seleucids. But that's really about it. The lines uh, didn't break much. We got one unit that fled here, a break in the Seleucid line. During the Seleucid turn, the lines are just continuing to grind together with very, very little effect. Um, we don't see a single Ptolemaic unit that got, uh, that got a failed morale check. I believe we had at least one or two kills though this, this round. I know a heavy infantry unit went... Not there, that one is good. I think here, I think I have he died there. Oh yeah, wait, no, I see two of these fours open, so maybe another one too. Anyway, we're definitely seeing a thinning of the Ptolemaic line. However, looking at things, it looks like the Seleucid line has more dangerous breaks in it. Um, I'd be very worried about something happening here. There's just not, there's heavy units on the Ptolemaic side and no uh, no corresponding heavies 
on the cellulosic side. Now the the Ptolemaic start out with more heavies, which is why that's likely to happen. And you got another hole here, which isn't too important. This one is frightening, but the heavy uh, Ptolemaics have been unwilling to pursue through there for the simple fact that uh, as long as the Seleucid elephants are presenting a significant threat there and they're actually kind of winning there, it's difficult to take advantage of that thinly guarded hole of light units. Okay, we're at the halfway point in the turn. Um, the Ptolemaics have just gone. And we see an interesting kind of uh, dichotomy, essentially. This side, the, uh, the elephants and the calf are actually, and there were less here, uh, are holding up pretty well on both sides, although, well, they're holding up pretty well on the Ptolemaic side. The whole, that whole right flank, though, for the Seleucids is really looking very weak, and we're seeing advances being made. Um, the problem is these light troops, you can't pin them down and fight them but then they charge up and prevent you from turning without making a morale check. So it's like, and they're easy to attack. So it seems like a good idea to try to keep pushing them back. Well, uh, the Ptolemaics have decided we have enough force here that we can start pursuing them and seeing what happens there. Um, not a lot of gaps in the line at all until we get to the other side. And here the elephants have just played havoc with this flank. Um, Not much more to say. I mean, we've got a Seleucid elephant charging around in the back of the uh, in the back of the Ptolemaic area. Uh, this again doesn't look strong. Well, this doesn't look terribly strong for either. But we've got some heavy units for the Ptolemaics up here in the front, and I think they've got the edge because of that. Uh, in the center, we're seeing the. Uh, the question mark units really coming into their own, the, the Egyptian uh, infantry. I can afford to make attacks at like 1 to 3 and 1 to 4 odds, which have very low chances of success, but the chance of me routing, and even if I route the effect in terms of I'll probably be coming back right away, um, is so low that it's worth taking that shot with the, these units. Uh, I generally tend to like doing that with the, the good units. They can fight. When you start doing the one to two odds with questionable units, you get questionable results. All right, I'm going to ship this one up into the interwebs land because I don't have anything uploading right now, and I think it's big enough to justify another one.